along with the other State of Origin players, backing up tonight, just 48 hours after the New South Wales victory at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. This is the second half of round 13 of the Optus Cup. And I guess these players that uh, are backing up are going to sleep very well over the weekend. Jim Sedaris, considered by many to be unlucky in not making the state side. And as uh, St George come out, we are reminded they've only won the one match at Brookvale since 1986. It's a record that uh, the mighty St George club would rather forget. Daniel Gartner back from injuries, as the boys pointed out. He was missing four of those five weeks where Manly only won the one game, the number 12, the line. Manly up against St George with uh, Hopawati taking it out just beyond the 30-metre line. Manly, of course, still leading the competition with eight and two. And two drawn results and they get the first penalty. St George have got some work to do. They're down in ninth and there's only seven available. There's a little push and a shove there. Just watch Hopawati, um, he half by, you know, there, he, not a knee, but he forces Pearson away with the knee, and then Pearson shoved him, so the referee Kelvin just having a little chat to the boys. Yeah, but again from John Hopawati, something just so unnecessary. Just beyond the 20 metre line, playing the back for the fullback, Craig Hancock, and then it is with Menzies, and Menzies, as Peter said, will be looking for some space tonight. Now that ball has been taken out. Referee disagrees, he thinks that he coughed it up cold and St George have come up with it. Maybe there was no interference from St George, it certainly looked that way and there were two players in the tackle. This is uh, Tanga Totoa and he's 32 metres away from his own line as the dummy half Brown comes back and uh, Colin Wood goes up the centre. Gets it beyond the red line, which is the 40-metre line in uh, in ARL. Here's a bit of light stepping and good work there by the St George second rower Darren Tracy, and he's about to, or he got play fibre in it, taking it back to the 30-metre line. Hardy a dummy half. Brown first receiver this time, displaying his versatility. The ball is out wide for Bartram, and Bartram will play the ball 22 metres away from the Manly line. St George with good territory. Brown again in the same position. Hardy at second receiver. They cut out two. They pick up Ainsco. Brunk is heading for the corner. Oh, so simple. Manly compressed. St George got outside them with a long pass. And Brunker has gone down the touchline to score at the fourth minute. St George for Manly. Nothing. Yeah, great work there from St George. Coming wide. As the pass goes out. And we freeze it there. You can see the compressed defence that Ray's talking about. Only this one. This pass to find Jamie Ainsco out wide is an absolute beauty. Way out in front. And Jamie Ainsco, he throws the pass at exactly the right time. Danny Moore well in field. Brunko, he's got good speed, probably deceptive speed. But both the passes, this one from, from Hardy, and especially the one from Ainsco, just superb timing. They just got outnumbered there, Manly. Saints had seven against five. And with the, the good passing, you can create the opportunities. That's a great ball. And Denny Moore probably just went a fraction in uh, too far in there. And he got showed up for pace too. Brunker just steamrolled past him. Lachi Brunker. Good. And a busy, a busy start to the game for Bartram. As Colin Ward does the bulldogging, does the ramrodding. Good player. Colin Ward. They lost... Uh, one of their good young front rowers, Stone. He went across to Super League and Ward has taken on a lot of the responsibility. Lance little Thompson finding it difficult apparently to get into the run on side. Little blindside play there from Nathan Brown. And Tanga Totoa got on his road anyway from Tooby then through to the hands of field on to Menzies. Menzies then puts on a little bit of a hesitation, puts on a big left hand fin before taking the ball inside the 20 metre line. Played it back quickly for Terry Hill, then for field on the left and away for Tooby out wide in the 5 8 position. Uh, Bartram hung an arm out, there was a groan from the crowd, not from the referee though. They play on with Hancock, coming into the hands of Field. Field puts a grubbing kick in, he's looking for the outside men, but well read by Brunker. And Adrian Brunker put away nine metres out from his own line. Well, Craig Field has taken the football here. 
And it's called play on. I thought there might have been two in the tackle. So Manning now with Menzies. A couple of metres out. In fact, Menzies almost over the line. And George hanging on as long as they can. And Sedaris pushing it wide. Tuvi floating it, gliding it across to Kosef. He tries to fend away from Bartram. Stands in the tackle. Gets it back for Gillespie to give it to Carroll. Carroll has to turn around and get the motors going in another direction. He's pulled down by Tracy. They're two metres inside the 20. Manley appealing for a penalty. Sedaris works on the left. Then it's gone away to Kosef. He's given the ball on for Field. Field tries to draw them. Here's a try coming up for Manley. Hopperwadi, the big man, goes over the line. John Hopperwadi is in to score. That's the equaliser. It's four points all at Brookvale now. Well, there you can see what John Hopperwadi is capable of. He hit the ball at pace and there was nothing going to stop him. He'd have gone through the grandstand behind if they'd have let him. Now, this is how Manly got possession. And I've got to say, it's got to be a penalty to St George because Daniel Gartner is involved in the tackle around the legs and Craig Fields picks the football up top. It's got to be a penalty to the Saints. But luck's a fortune. I get no doubt that he wasn't watching, Peter. In the, well, he should have got a call, shouldn't yep, he, Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm not arguing, but I know he wasn't watching because there was a great hesitation in him actually getting alongside the play of the ball to let it go on. But they've uh, found some space out wide and Hopper Whiting. He can play Sterlow's right. He's a very good player. Somebody stop him. He'll run out of the ground. <laughs> but not here. He's over the line. Clinch couldn't stop him. Now John Evan Clinch is with it. Six more tackles, says the referee. Oh, Smith, the fullback, hasn't just dropped it once. He's dropped it twice. Manly have got the ball. And they'll be looking to hurt St George. And David Smith will be praying they don't. Innes goes across and oh, he's done them a favour. Straight over the sideline. Well, Mark Coyne is yelling out, no way. I think he believes that the referee was about to give possession manly way. That's not the case. It's a bad blue, isn't it? Mistake on the first tackle. I wonder whether there was a... Yeah. St George hand in there propelling it out. I think you, I think you might find that uh, uh, Gartner involved as well. Ainscale dummy half. Ward, a short ball. Hardy. And then Brown comes angling back and it looked forward to me. The referee says that well, he didn't get a call. They play on. Ainsco drops it on the left foot. Looking for his flank as oh, it's gone backwards and over the sideline. And I reckon that's justice. You know, that, that last pass was dead set forward. Kelvin Jeff's calling someone out. Someone's had a whinge. Bit uh, chatty, Craig Field, just telling him just to shut up. Turn his back at the last moment and try and crouch down and get rid of the ball to a support. As I said, St George have effectively been shutting that down a little bit though tonight. And uh, now they get a penalty, Manly. Yeah, yeah. Interesting to make in their own half, Manly. Tuvi is playing uh, mainly as dummy half and Sadaris playing as a running forward. So it gives them six forwards to run with. and. Uh, Travels for St George, Mark Coyne clutching at his right wrist and heading for the dressing rooms in a great hurry. Craig Field finding the line. Carroll charging towards the 20 metre line. We get a report from the sideline on Mark Coyne. I thought it might have been only a dislocated finger, but he was definitely clutching at his wrist. And this is Tierney, who's on now. He didn't run on. Gillespie did that. Tierney plays the ball as Sedaris works it away. Wide for Tuvi, even wider for Craig Field. He was taken out late. Hancock did well. Moore is with it. Hancock has done incredibly well. And he takes it down inside the 10 metre line. Craig Hancock, nice work there. And now for Tuvi to go around the back of Tierney. Field pops it up for the waiting Kosef. Kosef for Gartner. Gartner to ground, five metres out from the line. Tuvi sweeps on a long pass. Field then tries to draw them in. Hopperwadi goes for the corner. And is he across? Is it a try? Yes, it is. John Hopperwadi gets his second try. And the Manly fans rejoice at the 17th minute. Eight points to four. Similar to the first try, but this time Hopperwadi didn't have to come in. As we freeze it there, this man here, Mark Bell, he was screaming to his players, look at the space out to the, the, the corner post as play continues. A 
wide cutout pass. He had to come a long way in, Mark Bell, and nobody's going to stop John Hopawate from this close. Yeah, Howard great, his way across. Great ball, wasn't it, from, from Craig Field? Manly starting to get their second phase play going. And Hopawate hasn't touched the ball too many times, but the last two times he's touched it, he's got two tries. I'm just wondering whether St George had, in fact, got their replacement out there and settled on the right of the ground in defence. I think it's Jim Lenahan. He was only out there a matter of seconds if, in fact, he made it, and I'm told that he did. Whether he actually made the right-hand side of the ground, I'm not absolutely certain. Um, and... Uh, oh, oh, Carroll. Copping. Sat him down. And St George coming away with it one-on-one. -on -one. Thompson, the red-headed um, back rower, is on for the Saints now. And I fancy that's Lenahan playing the ball. No, it wasn't. It was Smith. And now it's Ward, who's up to the 20-metre line. No goals in the match. Um, both goal kickers have had uh, any one of five St George players. Now to the feeding Tierney, who's just trampled over the top of Colin Ward. It took Corey Pearson to pull him down on the halfway line. Now Sadaris, and that was a good tackle. It really rocked Sadaris from Colin Ward. Kosef back for Hill. Pulled down by Pearson underneath. Ward over the top. Two the game. Because it, it does swell up enormously. Here's Bartram now. Pulled down and forced back inside the 20 metre line. And the penalty goes to the Saints. Hill this time, dissatisfied with the, the judgment. As uh, St George get the penalty and they've taken the tap to the 40 metre line. This crowd, you wouldn't believe how my coin has won the last five. George's end of the ground. Cliffy Lyons waiting for it. With it now. And then off the boot delicately, but St George will bring it back to the 20-metre line per medium of uh, Damien Smith for another restart at the 24th minute. Three tries, two to Manley, both by John Hopperwadi. The other to another winger, Adrian Bronco. No one successful with the boot. And Luke Felch is on. Uh, well, this is the penalty we saw at the Sydney Football Stadium last year against the Broncos, if my memory serves me correctly. And it caused all hell to pay. And you have to release the ball. It is, uh, it is a place kick restart from the 20-metre line. And that is not deemed a place kick. Yeah, I think the night you're talking about was Andrew G, the man yeah, involved. Yeah, Andrew. I think it was uh, against Sydney City, wasn't That's it? That's right, it was. So another two points you would imagine coming up here for Manly, a change in. And also Craig Innes, and now Brown going back for clinch. And this is a similar situation to the try. This time they go to the boot, and uh, they're trying to give Brunker a shot at Danny Moore in the jumping department. This has uh, gone over the sideline and the loose head and feed will go to the manly side. Well, it's proven to be a very effective ploy kicking to Brunker. He's, he's got a lot of tries. And I, well, I, to me, that's gone off Danny Moore's shoulder. And it should be a St George feed. Oh, we, a big stroke of luck there for the Eagles because St George should have this feed and be attacking 10 metres out. Well, you certainly couldn't say that Danny Moore didn't play at the ball. I mean, we must remember that the rules have changed in that department. Ball coming, carries the football to the halfway. Ten four. What did I say? Eight four. My apologies. Well, a lost ball here, scooped up by Manny. They go wide straight away to Hopawati. Good tackle by Mark Bell. He had to get up quickly. But a real danger time now for both teams, but more so St George as Hopawati gets away. A couple of minutes out to half time. Amazing how many points are scored. It's career to play. Tierney running off a Lions pass. Sadaris did well. Gardner's lost the ball. There was a chance on for Manley. Now Damian Smith turns it around for the Saints. And he's pulled down. Oh. 
Big just chance. outside the 30. Big chance there. Great pass from Neil Teeny. He's played well when he's been on. This combination, you know, of Craig Innes and John. And it's with Adrian Brunker, who picked it up nicely. That came off the feet of Brown. No knock on. Then Ainsco into Hardy and away for Smith on the outside. He's got a decoy run back on the inside and then he's been flung into touch. Well, Innes is getting the congratulations from his teammates, but really, Smith, he didn't have to flirt with the sideline. Oh, what a tackle. Great tackle. He's driven him dead set 10 metres out over the sideline. One of the best defensive centres I've ever seen, Craig Innes. So right in front of Steve Roach, the scrum is packing. What were you able to find out first? Yeah, well, firstly for Manly, Terry Hill is all right. So uh, he only got a bump to the shoulder, so there's no problem there. Uh, Bobby Foote wants his side to, to number up in defence. He said, we're wasting our kicking game. Let's concentrate a little more on that. He said, we do look our best when we start to offload the football, so keep the ball alive. Uh, for the St George side, David Waite, uh, he, he said that they, um, they've got to use the whole field and attack and stay out wide. And Manly will tire, so let's keep... Craig Field has gone through blocker. Hang on to that Nokia. He's over. Craig Field has done it again. Solo effort. Almost on cue. When the big fella talks, something happens. Yeah, I mean, blocker's done it again. Good uh, on you, Blocky. We love you here at Manly. And this is just... This is one-on-one. -on -one. This is Craig Field just sliding straight through. I'm not quite sure who he's beaten. Smith. Well, he did at the end. Of, I'm just wondering whether it's it's Jeff Hardy. No, in fact, it might be Tanker Tower who's missed him and Craig Field. He just sliced through and he's done the full pirouette, pirouette at the end. Great stuff. And this is what they bought Craig Field for, a halfback who loves to run the football. And they're running the ball in two hands. <laughs> Beautiful stuff there. Yeah, he did beat Smith. Perhaps one of your best. Well, he beat Tanker to Tower and Smith. In about 10 metres before Nathan Brown scooped it up and ran to Jim Sedaris, his opposite number. They're on the halfway line. Not bad yards being made by St George. That pass was suspect from Clint to Tanker to Tower, and this is Hardy. And six more tackles called by the referee now. As the ball is flung badly out to Brown, then Pearson, now Thompson. Thompson puts on the step. Runs towards the gap and is pulled down by Hancock and Menzies. 15 from the line. Down the left of the ground. Hardy. And the ball bouncing off the feet of a Manly player. Ainsco back for Pearson. Pearson then pulled down three metres away from the line. Came off a Manly player who didn't play at the ball, I might add. Then Ainsco. Away for Brown. Shorter pass for Kenwood. Was there an obstruction? Ken with a hand down for Lenahan and Bell. Bell makes a mistake. Right on the right on the try line. Well, it's comedy capers out there for St George at the moment. Out wide. It's almost like the three Stooges. Here it is. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Who wants it? And a drop pass from Mark Bell. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant piece of commentary that. <laughs> Two of his head goes back as Clinch grabs him by the back of the jumper. Kosef and then Gartner. Gartner trying to burst through. It's the full back hanging on, Smith. But Manley have taken it. Oh dear, that's a knock on against Kosef. So this will be a good uh, a good scrum for St George. They Brunker Brunker losing his footing. Gillespie hangs on to him. Brown coming on the right. Away from Kenwood or Tanga Totoa for Kenwood now, and he's got um, Lenahan running flat on the outside. He couldn't get it to him. Hardy goes back on the fifth tackle. Clinch goes across, looking again for the leap, and up they go. These two wingers are having quite a contest. And it's a line dropout. Clinch is in trouble for number seven. Well, Danny Moore was back for this kick. He gave himself some room. Look at him back and back. He knows it's coming. Goes up for it. And comes off Moore's hands. He's still in the play there. After that, it came off Brunker last.
with the Dragons or stay with the Dragons. Brown with a short ball, Kenwood running. And then a great tackle by Tuvi. Perfect example of the strength of the Manly captain. Brown and Ward. But everywhere they run, unless they right for Tuvi. Sadalis cuts out Menzi. Hill puts a kick in. Rolling awkwardly past Blanca. The fullback comes into it. And Smith can't take it. Manly have got it. Menzies knows that he's oh, close to the touchline. In fact, he's gone into touch. Oh, well, the, very lucky the advantage had been played. And uh, Steve Menzies might have been better just taking that tackle there. Instead of trying to get that extra metre, Terry introduces his kicking game to the public. It really took a long time to try and get to that football, didn't he, Damien Smith? Steve Menzies picks up. Smith there, foot's on the line, good call there. I'm well, just having a look through the St George to a fairly large degree, and oh, I haven't seen Wayne Bartram out there for a while. We'll get Steve Race to find out what the story is there, but I can't remember Wayne Bartram. Oh, oh, that is a bell ringer. Oh. Kenwood. He's run flush into Carroll. Touch judges come in. Kenwood. Well, at least he hasn't sent him off yet. I mean, he's going to put him on report, it would seem. He hasn't sent him off yet. Well, let's watch the height of this. Well, he's come up off the football. He's hit the football first and come up. It's still very high. No excuses, but... Well, Kenwood is... Grab straight at his forehead. Yeah, I, I agree. It has come up off the football. And, and the other thing in Mark Carroll's defence is that he did try and pull out of it late. I know that it wasn't to any great effect. And to this man's credit, he has now got to his feet and has uh, made it known that he's not badly injured. Keeping them guessing. And he's really been the only St George player, bar that man, Brown, that has had them guessing. And here's... Um, an example of uh, how you can take the ball off another. Now he's given a penalty. No, he's, in, he's put two fingers up. He's put two fingers up. Yeah, yeah. Let's well, have a look at this one. I'm telling you, he called play on. And one of the touches has must have said something. Oh, well, there you are. He's ruled that Gillespie was in the tackle yeah. for a time. Well, Gillespie, he'd, he'd released by then. Brown. Now for Tanga Totoa. Running with Sedaris. Over the top came Tierney, and a penalty will come for St George, and the sin bin is on the cards. He's calling somebody up. Hold him down, he's going. We're right, away we go. Well, if the bloke didn't respond, he had to talk to the captain eventually. Now Bartram is back on the field, the ball has come loose, and Manly have got it. Oh, St George have had a couple of chances in this second half. And they have frittered away those opportunities. Well, maybe that's why Wayne Bartram hasn't been out there for a long time. He's been a gross disappointment on State of Origin. And that play there, it's almost defies description. It's not even the first tackle as yet. I know that he was trying to pass a football and got hit at the same time, but you just can't hand over possession that easily. Again, put the same ruling together, two in the tackle. At the moment, they're just winding the clock down now. I don't think they feel under any great threat at all. St George, they can just put something on, it might spark. A good 10, 15 minutes to finish, but at the moment, Manly doing it very, very nicely. Ainsco able to fling the ball back in for clinch. Prior to being taken out over the sideline, St George. Back to the 40-metre line. As Hardy puts in a kick. He's looking for a chase from his right uh, right wingers. Bell has run over the top of it. In a hand put down from behind by Innes. What a But tackle. there was a knock on. Craig Innes has come from nowhere. As we take a break, it is 14 to 14-4 Manly over St George. This is what happened just before the break. The kick was looking for... I've got to say, a more enthusiastic chase than was offered. Mark Bell runs over the top of it, but the referees ruled that he got a, must have got a finger to it. Now, Menzies has found some open pasture. 
away for Cliffy Lyons. Back for Menzies. Menzies, they've run him down. Nine metres from the line. Lyons. For Hobawadi looking for three. John Hobawadi's over the line, gets it down. He's over the line. Three tries for John Hobawadi. And 18 points to four. Well, Steve Menzies has really struggled to find some open spaces lately, but Nick Kosef puts him away. Cliff Lyons supporting. He, he got rid of it as soon as he could. Ainsco pushed him out of the way. Mark Bell gobbled Menzies up from behind. But really no time for St George to get set. And another situation with John Hopawati so close to the line with the head of, of steam up. Just couldn't stop him. Kenwood tried to grapple him to the ground. But he was only a metre or two out from his own line. Once again, plenty of St George defence there, but it's, it's ordinary defence and Hopper makes the most of it. But a great ball from Nick Kossoff. He, he took out four or five St George players there and getting that pass to Menzies. And... As we see Hopper, great strength shown by him. And a good effort to get the ball down too. And, and then Beaver was jog-trotting, looking for someone. Had to slow down to let Cliffy catch up to him. He was looking... Oof, Wayne Bartram now. And Hancock sending. Carroll charging back to them. That's uh, Carroll's 17th hit-up in the game. He's made 14 tackles. And Tanga Tower has come out of that tackle the worst for wear. He went in strongly on Mark Carroll, but... He's carried the shoulder back out of it. Daniel Gartner. We've got uh, 66 minutes gone now. As Savaris puts Kosev down the blind side. And he's lost at Kosev. And he will. And it is Menzies who will play it. Back to his fullback. Carroll. If we thought he was getting. Ah, oh, Daniel Gartner has gone straight through. Looks for support. The support was there again from Cliffy Lyons. And eventually, and unfortunately for him, it goes to ground. Well, this is Daniel Gartner's first game back for a long time, about a month. And he's got better as the game's gone on. That was an awful attempt to tackle from Tracy, who is, who is out there injured, by the way. He probably shouldn't be out there, but they must have run out of troops in George. And Cliffy just couldn't handle that one. Brown to Hardy. Hardy then is uh, 25 metres away from the... Manly line, Brown puts in the, the high kick across the ground and Hopawati brings it down in the in goal. And he's ordered a line dropout because Hopawati leapt from the field of play. Well, the Manly players don't think so then. They're blowing up. This will show it. No doubt about it. Yeah, he's left uh, the field of play and the referee has got it right. And the line dropout. We'll see the ball come back for St. George. There's Cliff Lyons. The oh, finds finds a knock on from Gavin, Gavin Clinch with that uh, that ordinary drop kick. Started out ordinary, it finished up beautiful for Glavin Clinch. <laughs> You're quite right. He tried to talk the referee into a knock back. Bottom points, middle and latter stages of the season. Fulton, Tierney. Good pass by Tierney, and who's backing up? Cliffy Lyons again backing up. Fulton backs him up. They've put on a two-man act. Now they come across, and Hancock. Did he get it down in time? The touch judge thinks that he did. Referee says yes, and Manly is in for another try. 24 to 4. The Dragons are smoking, but from the wrong end. We saw some beautiful work from Nick Kossef in the previous try. Neil Tierney does a great job there for Cliff Lyons. Been like a drover's dog tonight. And Scott Fulton does very, very well here. He turns Mark Bell around. Mark Bell, he looks back to see what's going on. In that split second, Fulton has delivered the ball to his outside man, and the try was on. A great ball from Neil Tierney. He's a, he's a great player, having been involved with him in the state of origin. He gives his whole heart every time. And Bell, you've got to keep your eye on the man with the football. Took his eyes off Hancock, and uh, Hank did well to get over the line. Yeah, we saw Ainsco in the first try of the game deliver the ball just at the perfect time, and Scott Fulton does as well here. 
Didn't he do well, Scott? He just held it up, held it up, and that keeps the pressure on the defence. Eventually, someone's got to come out of the line or make a mistake, and in the end, it was Bell. I'm telling you, he was doing well. There's a bloke called Cliff Lyons. Every time there's a half break made, Cliff's there. I think Peter used the, the description, Grover's dog. And uh, he has been there, the old fella. Backing up the speedsters. And uh, from memory, three times in the last ten minutes, they've done it. And three times, who's been there? Cliffy Lyon. Field from the sideline, and again, he's pushed it away. So the scoreboard, Manly 24, St. George 4 in Friday Night Football. And 24 to 4, and there's some controversy surrounding Craig Field's eligibility to take that conversion attempt. Yeah, a few people on the sideline, not quite sure whether Craig Field was actually on the field of play when Craig Hancock scored the try. And if, if he wasn't, that obviously rules him ineligible to take the conversion attempt. Pretty academic at, at this stage. Scott Fulton was out there, obviously, in passing the football. Any comment, Blocker? Well, he, he just come on straight on for Tuvi, mate. And, uh, yeah, he wasn't on the field. Just come on and grab the football and have a kick. From the, uh, the Manly crowd, and so there should be. Lions then trying to run. Oh, he does! Cliffy, he's in the clear! Can the old legs get him there? Go on, fella, you're going to make it! You've done it, Cliffy! You're supported three times, you're entitled to one for yourself. Good on you, Cliffy. He's a legend. Oh, fantastic stuff. From Cliff Lyons, the veteran. Dandes Hasler, the oldest players in the comp. It's a simple, it's show and tell. Away he goes, they cop the dummy. And those legs, they're pumping. Will they get in there? The young half can't get in Clinch. And he gets there. What about that? Will they get him there? He's watching the second replay. <laughs> and he's still asking, will they get him there? <laughs> you had to ask a question. Well, I've still got my doubts. Clint's diving at the end. Len Lenahan didn't have the speed on the inside. And just the little dummy put him through. Slid away. Most dangerous player on a football field is a man with the football in his hands. And then Cliffy, just to put the icing on the cake, then he put on the extra two. Well, I, I, this, this, I reckon, will be his first goal in first grade if he kicks it. Our statsman's reaching for the books. He's reaching for the pamphlets. What's he got? Well, set the mark, Paul. What's the mark? You go to training. What, how does he hit him? In actual fact, it'll be his tenth. Oh, well, you're going oh, far well, wrong. <laughs> you're going far wrong. He's odds on, then. He's, he's an accomplished goal kicker. It's nice to know that Paul Vorton doesn't know everything about Manly and its players. Cliffy's kick is indicative of a man that's only kicked nine in a career of 66 years. He kicked them all at North. 20, 28 to 4, and the curtain comes down on it. Manly running away at full time to a 24 points victory.